In the last lesson, we talked about the unit of a measurement. In this lesson, we will talk about the precision and error of a measurement. It is safe to say that no measurement is ever infinitely precise. For example, when we say that Kelly is 5 feet 6 inches, we don't mean that she is in fact 5 foot 6 inches tall to infinite precision. Every measurement is made with an instrument. For example, you could use a ruler to measure lengths. On a ruler, you'll see marks corresponding to different lengths. If the length of the object you are measuring falls between two marks, then you have to make a guess of its length. In this example, the length of the object falls between the 6.5 and 6.6 .6 centimeter marks. Since it is more to the side of 6.5, I can make an educated guess and call its length 6.52. Another person who makes the same measurement may call it 6.53. Another may say it's 6.51. This is in fact the most common source of error for a measurement, simply because the instrument used to make the measurement is not infinitely precise. The measurement itself has an intrinsic uncertainty. Notice that this type of error is usually random. That is, the error of our measurement is sometimes higher and other times lower than the real length. But the likelihood of getting an error on the high side is the same as an error on the low side. We call these random errors or statistical errors. We usually express the uncertainty of a measurement by attaching an estimate of the random error after it. For example, the measurement above would be called 6.52 plus or minus 0.01 centimeters. Because I know that, it's around 6.52, but it's unlikely to be smaller than 6.51 or higher than 6.53. But even if the length of the object lines up with a mark on our ruler, the measurement is still imprecise. We still don't know if it's 3.40 or 3.39 or 3.41. In fact, this measurement should have the same error as the one above if it is made with the same ruler. But on the other hand, there are numbers which we can know to infinite precision. For example, counting numbers are infinitely precise. We can have one person or two persons in the room, but we can never have 1.567 persons. Counting numbers should carry no errors unless your count is intrinsically imprecise. For example, if we say that 600,000 people attended a certain festival in the park, we don't mean that we have actually counted every single person. This measurement would have to be taken as an estimate only and therefore imprecise. Some errors are not random. For example, if my balance is calibrated wrong so that every measurement is smaller by 0.2 grams, this would be called a systematic error. All sources of systematic errors should be eliminated from an experiment because they would produce a lopsided result. But if you know the extent and direction of each systematic error, you may compensate for them in your data analysis. As an example, if I'm measuring the heat released by a reaction, but the container does not insulate completely and leaks heat, the temperature rise I measure would always be lower than the correct answer. Such error will lead to a smaller than correct heat of reaction. Sometimes we may want to know the fractional error or percentage error of a measurement. For example, 6.52 plus or minus 0.01 centimeters will have a percentage error of 0.01 divided by 6.52 times 100% equals 0.15%. If the same ruler is used to measure a much shorter length, such as 0.33 plus or minus 0.01, its percentage error would be much larger. In this case, it will come out to be 3.0%. In the next lesson, we will talk about how to deal with random errors in calculations and data analysis.